Hi, I'm Gerardo, a PhD student at TH Zurich. Today, I will present our work, Google Neural Network Models for Edge Devices, Analyzing and Mitigating Machine Learning Experience Bottlenecks. This work was led by Amirali Boroman during his internship at Google. First, I'll give an overview of this work. In this work, we extensively analyzed 24 edge neural network models from Google, while running inference on the Google HTTP accelerator for various types of neural network models. We identified that while running neural network inference, the accelerator suffers from three main challenges. It operates significantly below its peak throughput, it operates significantly below its theoretical peak energy efficiency, and its memory system is not efficient. Our analysis leads to the key insights that this challenge is arrived with the monolithic one size fits all design of the accelerator, which does not account for the heterogeneity across different neural network layers. To solve this issue, we propose MESA, a framework that maps the execution of a particular neural network layer to a more appropriate hardware accelerator. We extensively evaluate MESA for Google neural network models, and we observe that it improves performance and energy efficiency by 3 times and 3.1 times compared to the baseline HTTP accelerator, by reducing error and cost across 24 edge machine learning models. Here is the outline for this talk. First, I'll give a brief introduction of this work. Second, I will discuss the key bottlenecks of the Google HTTP accelerator and the different neural network models. Third, I will discuss our proposal called Mensa, and fourth, our realization of Mensa called Mensa G, which targets Google Edge neural network models. Fifth, I will provide a glance of the key result of this work, and finally, I will conclude this talk. So let's get started with the introduction of this work. There is a large interest recently in executing machine learning tests directly in edge devices, as opposed to sending them to the cloud. And there are a couple of reasons for that. As for example, it's much better from the privacy perspective. It allows you to always run machine learning inference, even if there is no internet connectivity. It enables you to do inference much faster, especially for latest sensitive applications like autonomous cars, and you are no longer limited by the network bandwidth. But the problem is that these edge devices have limited battery and computational budget. As a result, it becomes very challenging to run resource-intensive machine learning tests directly on them. Thus, industry has started looking at specialized accelerator especially designed for edge devices to improve efficiency and energy consumption. At the same time, neural networks are evolving rapidly, which has led to all sorts of different models, each target different applications. The major challenge is to design an edge accelerator that can efficiently execute inference across a wide variety of neural network models. Next, I will describe our analysis of various neural network models running on the Google HTTP accelerator. We analyze Google HTTP models using the Google HTTP as the baseline accelerator. The HTTP is a systolic array based on a generic tile architecture. Here, I give a brief high-level overview of how it works. The machine learning model is stored in DRAM. The model is fetched from DRAM layer by layer. Each layer includes parameters and activations for a particular layer. At a high level, the accelerator has four key components. A processing element array to perform multiply accumulations, a large SRAM based on chip buffer to hold parameters and activations, and a data flow, which specify how parameters and activations are mapped to a processing element array. We analyze the inference execution of the accelerator using 24 edge neural network models that serve as internal benchmarks from the Google HTTP, including six current neural network transistors used for applications such as automatic speech recognition, 13 convolution neural networks, typically used as applications as image classification, two long short-term memories, LSTMs, used for applications such as language translation, and three recurrent convolution neural networks used for applications as image captioning. We found three major challenges faced by the HTTP accelerator when executing inference for the 24 different models. The accelerator operates significantly below its peak throughput, operates significantly below its peak energy efficiency, and handles memory access inefficiently. I will go into more details on each one of those three challenges next. First, the accelerator operates below its peak throughput during inference execution. To illustrate this issue, we rely on a roofline model, where the x-axis shows the arithmetic intensity of different models in fault per byte, and the y-axis shows the achieved throughput in teraflops per second. The peak throughput of the HTTP accelerator is of 2 teraflops per second. We make two observations. First, we observe that transducers and LSTM models have the greatest underutilization, with both of them achieving less than 1% of the peak throughput. Second, while CNNs and RCNN models do sometimes better, they achieve only 52.2% of the peak utilization on average. Second, we observe that the HTTP operates below its theoretical maximum energy efficiency. Again, we use a roofline model to illustrate such an issue. This time, the y-axis shows the energy of different models while you execute inference on the HTTP accelerator in teraflops per joule. 
The peak energy efficiency of the accelerator is of 1.42 terafoul per joule. We make two observations. First, the energy efficiency is particularly low of 33.1% of the maximum for LSTMs and transducer models. Second, even the best CNN model achieves only 50.7% of the maximum efficiency. Third, we observe that the minimum hierarchy of the HTPU is not efficient. I illustrate such observation with this figure that shows the energy breakdown of different components of the accelerator architecture while executing experience for different models. From this figure, we observe that 46% of the total energy goes to off chip traffic to DRAM, and 31% of the total energy consumption goes to distributing parameter across processing element arrays. After they define such challenge, the next question is from where such challenges are coming from? To answer this question, we further characterize our neural network models. We draw two key observations from a model analysis. First, we observe a large variation in terms of layer characteristics across different models. To illustrate, this figure shows the total parameter footprint versus the float to byte ratio or reuse across the layers of representative CNNs, LSTMs, and transducers. We observe from the figure that the layers from LSTMs and transducers have larger parameter footprints and lower reuse than layers from CNNs. Second, even within a single model, layers show variation in terms of layer characteristics. For example, we observe that layers in a single CNN model show a very MAC intensity of up to 100 times across different layers and a varying float per byte ratio of up to 244 times across different layers. The main conclusion for analysis is that the key components of the HTPU are oblivious to the layer heterogeneity of different neural network models and even within a single neural network model. The monolithic design approach of the HTPU leads to the inefficiency and resource utilization, since the accelerator design over-provisions the size of processing element arrays and on-chip buffers, while assuming a rich data flow and fixed off-chip memory bandwidth leading to the three accelerator challenges related to performance, energy, and memory we identify in our analysis. Next, I will describe our proposal to cope with such an issue. Based on our analysis and insight, the goal of our work is to design an edge neural network accelerator that can efficiently run inference across a varying number of different models and layers. To this end, instead of designing a one-size-fits-all monolithic accelerator, we propose MENSA, a new accelerator framework for neural network inference. In a baseline system, Different machine learning models are executed in a single monolithic edge accelerator, which leads to performance and energy issues. On the other hand, MISA distributes the layer from a neural network model using a runtime scheduler across a collection of a smaller hardware accelerators. They are catered to the properties of different layer types. By specializing each accelerator to a subset of layers, MISA avoids the shortcoming of current monolithic edge machine learning accelerators, resulting in a highly efficient and high performance accelerator with a much smaller area size. Next, I will give a brief introduction of Mesa Runtime Scheduler. The goal of Mesa Software Runtime Scheduler is to identify which accelerator each layer in a neural network model should run on. It works as follows. The scheduler gets a neural network model as input. It also has two other pieces of information, the characteristics of each layer and the key characteristics of the available hardware accelerators. As I will show next, different layers tend to group into a smaller set of layer families with a sharing key property. In this way, we can have a small pool of edge accelerators where each accelerator caters to a specific family of layers. We collect the characteristics of the accelerator and layers once prior to inference execution. With all this information, the scheduler generates a per-layer mapping between the layers and the accelerators by utilizing a mapping heuristic. We invite you to check our paper for more details about our scheduling heuristics. We highlight how our MENSA framework can be employed in practice by proposed MENSA G, which target Google Edge Neural Network models. First, we need to decide how many accelerators we need based on the key characteristics of our neural network models. We make a key observation that the majority of the layers we target fall into five major families in terms of characteristics that impact the hardware design. First, we find two families of layers, families one and two, that have low parameter footprint and high data reuse and MAC intensity. We call such layers compute-centric layers. Second, we find three families of layers, families three, four, and five, that have high parameter footprint, low data reuse, and MAC intensity. We call such layers data centric layers. Based on the key characteristics of the 24 neural network models and their layers, we designed three specialized accelerators Pascal, Pavlov, and Jackward. I'll give a brief overview about each accelerator next. So here is Pascal. Pascal is a compute centric accelerator that is designed for the compute centric layers of families 1 and 2. It has a 32 by 32 processing element array. Since layers from families 1 and 2 perform a large number of MAC operations, so we want to size Pascal's processing element array to efficiently perform those in parallel. We reduce the size of the activation buffer in Pascal from 2 megabytes in the HTPU to 256 kilobytes in Pascal, 
This reduction is possible due to our specialized data flow design for Pascal. We reduce the size of the parameter buffer from 4 megabytes in the HTPU to 128 kilobytes in Pascal because layers in families 1 and 2 have a small parameter footprint. Given the low off chip memory bandwidth requirements of Pascal, we keep the accelerator in the CPU die. Next, we have Pavlov. Pavlov caters to layers in families 3, which are data centric and mainly consists of data centric LSTM layers. Because family tree layers have low MAC intensity and mainly perform matrix vector multiplication, we design a much smaller processing element array from Pavlov that is in the Google HTPU. We briefly chose an 8x8 array size to balance latency, utilization, and energy. Due to the small activation footprint of layers in family tree, we use a 128 kilobyte buffer from activations, while our data flow designed for Pavlov allows us to eliminate the parameter buffers and stream parameters directly from the RAM. We designed to place Pavlov inside the memory device to accommodate the large off-chip memory bandwidth requirement of family tree layers. Finally, we have Jacquard, which caters to layers in families 4 and 5. They are primarily non-LSTM data centric layers. While layers in families 4 and 5 have low MAC intensity, they perform more MAC operations on average than family tree layers. Because of that, we empirically select a 16 by 16 processing element range Jacquard. We use a 128 kilobytes buffer for activations, and 128 kilobytes buffer for parameters in Jackport. Similar to Pavlov, we place Jackport inside the memory due to the high memory bandwidth demands of layers in families 4 and 5. We invite you to check our paper for more details about the accelerators, their designs, and specialized data flows. Finally, we provide a brief overview of our evaluations. We analyze the inference energy of Mesa G proposal against the baseline HTPU accelerator the baseline HTPU using a high bandwidth of chip memory device as its main memory. In this plot, values are normalized to the baseline HTPU system. We draw the following observations. First, Mesa G placement of the accelerator and careful data flow design enables to reduce the energy consumed by the on-chip and off-chip parameter traffic by 15.3 times on average compared to the baseline. Second, Mesa G reduces the dynamic energy of on-chip buffers and NOC by almost 50 times compared to the baseline system with high bandwidth memory. We conclude that Mesa G improves inference energy by three times compared to the baseline HTPU. We also analyze Mesa G throughput compared to the baseline HTPU and baseline HTPU with high bandwidth off-chip memory. We observe that Mesa G's improved throughput compared to the baseline HTPU by 3.1 times on average. We invite you to check our paper for more details on Mesa Runtime Scheduler or Accelerator's data flow, comparison against prior state-of-the-art and neural network accelerators, Mesa G utilization results, and Mesa G inference later results. All of that is in our paper. Next, we conclude our talk. In this work, we extensively analyzed 24 edge neural network models from Google, while running inference in the Google HTTP accelerator for various types of neural network models. We identified that while running neural network inference, the accelerator suffers from three main challenges. It operates significantly below its peak throughput, it operates significantly below its theoretical peak energy efficiency, and its memory system is not efficient. Our analysis leads to the key insights that this challenge arrived due to the monolithic one-size-fits-all design of the accelerator, which does not account for the heterogeneous across different neural network layers. To solve this issue, we propose Mensa, a framework that maps the execution of a particular neural network layer to a small appropriate hardware accelerator. We extensively evaluate Mensa for Google neural network models, and we observe that it improves performance and energy efficiency by three times and 3.1 times compared to the baseline HTTP accelerator by reducing error and costs across 24 edge machine learning models. Thanks for listening.